Okay, let's do some practice with dimensional analysis on a problem that has to do with units of energy. Now the SI unit for energy is called the Joule. It's abbreviated with a capital J. But we don't, we in the United States anyway, don't think about energy in terms of joules. We think about it in terms of calories, right? When you look at a package of food, then it has caloric information on it. That's how much energy we can get out of it. So using dimensional analysis or the factor label method, we can solve problems that look like this one. I, I'm eating a Hershey's Kiss. It's got 22 calories in it. How much energy can I get out of eating that one Hershey's Kiss? Because I can definitely stop at eating just one. Well, there's a couple pieces of information that we need. First of all, food calories. So a food calorie, which I know it's a food calorie because it's a capital C here. That's calorie. So that capital C in a food calorie indicates that it's actually one kilocalorie. And the prefix kilo in the metric system indicates 10 to the third or a thousand. So this would be a thousand little c calories. So that's one important piece of information. Sorry, my pen bled a little bit there. So we have food calories are a capital C calorie, which is a kilocalorie, which is equal to a thousand calories. So that's all. Those are things that I know. And um, one of the things that you may not know, but is look upable, is the relationship between one little c calorie and then joules, which are SI units. So let's um, look up that information and we find that it's 4.18 joules is one calorie. 4.184 if we wanted to give ourselves more sig figs, but let's use what 4.18 for the purposes of this one. Now in the dimensional analysis that we've practiced before, remember that we want to start off with the quantity that we're given. So in this case, 22 calories. You'll note in our US customary system, which comes from the British system, that abbreviations are usually more than two digits, right, or two um, symbols. And then they usually end with a period if we're abbreviating, so like inches, for example, or miles, tens of periods. Okay, so if I start off with what I'm given, now I want something that's going to be relating calories to something else. And so what I know here is how many little c calories are in a big c calorie. So that might be useful information. Let's plug that in. And that might be useful because I'm looking for joules of energy. So what I ultimately want is joules at the end of all of my series of conversion factors. I want to have joules on that last numerator. So I can go from big C calories to little c calories. So I need something that's related to my little c calories here. I have this relationship to joules. So one calorie is 4.18 joules. And now if I were to stop here, then my calories divide out, my little c calories divide out, left with an answer in joules, which is what I'm looking for. It answers the question. And when I plug this into my handy calculator, and my calculator says that it is this many, 91,960 joules. So remember that we don't always trust our calculators, so we should check our answer. So let's check. Does it make physical sense? As scientists, it matters what the number's magnitude is. It matters if it's positive or negative. It matters what the units are. And it matters how many significant figures it has. So for ours, let's just check magnitude. Should it be bigger or smaller than that initial number? Well, this is a kilocalorie. This is a big C calorie. And so I'm kind of going through and based on what I know, there's a thousand calories in this guy and there's more joules in one calorie. Okay. So if I kind of, kind of ballpark or I think of it as like back of the envelope calculation, then I would imagine that this number is going to be significantly larger than this one is, right? And that's what we see. So that's good. So far, so good. Now we have to think about sig figs. 
So when we're factoring in significant figures, which we always do because we're always concerned about the precision of our measurements, then we have to look at which numbers are exact and which ones are inexact. And then we will round our answer based on the inexact numbers. Now this is a measured quantity, so that makes it inexact. Someone measured that Hershey's Kiss and figured out how much energy you could get out of it, and this was the measurement. This is a definition, so this is exact. It's a defining characteristic that there are a thousand calories in a kilocalorie. This was given to you as a definition, so it is also exact. We're not going to factor it in when we are looking at significant figures. Now it can have a different number of significant figures depending on how it's given to you, but when you're given definitions like this, then you're not going to factor them in. So the only number we have to take into account is my first one. So how many sig figs does it have? It has two. Our rules with multiplication and division are that we round the answer to the same number of significant figures as the least number in my inexact numbers. So I need to round this guy to two significant figures. That means one, two are significant. Now I'm looking to the next one to round. It's a number that's greater than five, so we're going to round up. So that makes it nine to two thousand joules. Now we don't like all those zeros though because zeros are ambiguous at the end. So we will write it in scientific notation because we are scientists. And we want to make sure that we know that there are two significant figures. So that gives me a final answer of 9.2 times 10 to the fourth joules. And again, joule is the SI unit. So this is what scientists would use. Now it's kind of hard if we don't use joules or even if we think about it in terms of calories, well, how much energy do I really get out of that? What does that actually mean in a physical sort of sense? Now, when we think about energy in our homes, we think about powering things. So we power our computers or we power our lights. And so let's think about that. If I tell you some information, we can use dimensional analysis to give us and get at some quantities that might be a little more interesting. Now, a jewel is equal to a watt times a second. Watt seconds. And watts are power, right? Like a, a wattage for a light bulb, for example. And seconds are the SI unit for time. And of course, joule is, you know, energy. If we're thinking about the quantity that we're measuring here. So energy is equal to the power times the time that it's being used. So that's, you know, interesting. Let's say that that's, there's our 92,000 joules, but what can we use that energy for? Maybe we could solve problems or answer the question um, that looks like this. So how many seconds could that energy <clears throat> So that was our 9.2 times 10 to the fourth joules power a 60 watt light bulb. Okay, so that gives us a physical, um, practical, hands-on kind of way that we could utilize this piece of information. So I have this amount of energy. How long, how much time could I power my light bulb? How long could I be running this light bulb given this amount of energy? Okay, so a couple important pieces of information here. A joule is equal to a watt second, as we said. And so if we're doing some rearrangement here, then we could say that a second is equal to a joule over a watt. Right. So if I take those 9.2 times 10 to the fourth joules and divide them by my wattage, 60 watts, then that'll give me a second or an answer in seconds. In this case, it's 1,533 
0.33 seconds. Okay, that's what my calculator says. Well, my calculator actually says 33333 forever, right? So, you know, we're repeating that digit for forever. Uh, given my sig figs here, this one technically has uh, one, but let's call this two sig figs. We'll round at the end because we're working off of this amount of energy. So we could kind of think about our wattage as being a count, perhaps. Um, they tend to be in whole numbers like that. Wattages don't tend to care that scientists find zeros ambiguous. No one consulted us. So um, that's a lot of seconds. I have a hard time wrapping my head around how much time this actually is. So wouldn't it be more useful to maybe figure out how many minutes that is or how many hours that is? That puts it into more practical terms. I can picture how long, you know, a number of hours is. This many seconds, it's hard to tell because I just don't think about them in that way. So dimensional analysis to the rescue, rescue again. So if I take my 1.5, I'm just going to do two sig figs here, times 10 to the third seconds, and I wanted to go to hours, then I need seconds on the bottom here, and I don't off the top of my head know seconds to hours directly, but I do know seconds to minutes. And remember that our conversion factors have to equal one, so I have to have the same quantity on both the top and the bottom. Even though they have different units, they have to be in equality. So for every one minute, I have 60 seconds. And then I can go from minutes to hours. Right? So my setup here, seconds will divide out, minutes will divide out. I'll be left with an answer in hours. That's going to solve my problem. So I need to know this relationship too. And again, maybe you knew that there were 360 um, or 3,600 seconds in an hour, and that's great. That's uh, all well and good. I'm all for that. Um, I just uh, didn't, I don't necessarily know that off the top of my head, so I like to do it in multiple steps. So my seconds divide out, my minutes divide out, I'm left with an answer in hours, and I get 0.416. All right, so I've been kind of loosey-goosey with my sig figs along the way. If we go back to our original problem and go with the two significant figures, if I round this guy to two significant figures, then that's one, two. I'm looking to this guy to round. So that would be 0.42 hours. Now at this point, I've been doing some math. You might have lost track about what we were talking about at the beginning, but we were talking about Hershey's Kisses, right? How could we forget that they, we were talking about chocolate? So if I have one Hershey's Kiss, the energy that's in one Hershey's Kiss could power a light bulb for 0.42 hours. I think if I have a whole bunch of Hershey's Kisses, maybe I sit down and I have, this is very hypothetical, an entire bag of Hershey's Kisses. And if I eat that whole bag, then I wonder how many light bulbs I could power, right? So that's kind of the idea. With the energy, we can use that energy to do important things. And then we can use dimensional analysis to give us information about what those are.